All right, it is 5 o'clock it's Eastern. Time. It is time to go. Hey, everybody, welcome back to this show. Is a JK. It's your old pal, Jason Tudor, with my buddy, Keith Pinnell. I almost said Pinella again. I don't know why I'm doing that. Anyway, we are here for about another hour to talk to you about all the things that are in our head. That's a lot of stuff. And we've there. corrected Keith's volume today. So we are still in the recliners. We are going to move to a round table setup somewhere in this area soon. But for now, we are reclining, and we've changed the camera angles. We've got one other one right over there. So that's his camera angle, uh, and this this one over here is mine. So we're, we're st if we get one more camera, we're going to put it right in the middle of the screen uh, so that we could see the two of us. But really, we, we want one more camera so that we can have an ISO on him and ISO on me. But we're just not rolling in that kind of uh, podcast show dough yet. Yet. Yeah, we'll get there, though. All right. You have an Under Armour hat on today. I have an Under Armour hat on. You get your Cowboys thing on. Cowboys. I've got my Raiders thing on. So uh, a lot yeah. to talk about. Of course, we'll be talking about COVID again. We'll talk about um, uh, what the Sooners did yesterday that you got so excited about. I didn't really see what that was. I'm pretty sure it was beat Oklahoma State, but I'll let you ramble about that. Then we're going to talk about a series on HBO Max called The Vow, which I've been watching, which I have complaints. <laughs> <laughs> I have a myriad complaints about The Vow. Um, it doesn't look like our comments are working. Maybe make sure they what are the authorized. And if you, that way you are commenting. Nope, they're authorized. So uh, let's preview them, make sure they're alive. Yep, okay, so we're just waiting for comments, I guess. Okay. Hey, if you're watching, comment. Oh, let's move this, by the way. It shouldn't be on your face. Hello, let's move it over here to my side. That makes it a little more, okay. That's a little more unobtrusive. All right. So we'll also talk about the flurry to buy a PlayStation 5 or an Xbox, which my friend Dees Cassius is going through right now, apparently. Dees what? Uh, Dees Cassius. Dees Cassius. That is his nom de plume. Okay. Uh, we'll talk about why John Cleese was trending today, and then we'll get into probably some COVID stuff and then a bunch of stuff. But anyway, what's up with you? Man, I, you know, I played golf yesterday. Mm -hmm. It was 40 Two degrees. I missed my phone call, by the way. Uh, well, I just knew it was Saturday. You'd have other things to do. That's true. Uh, because I respect Dee Dee and her need to travel. Put some respect on it. That's right. Hello, Daniel so, Nathaniel. Hi, Daniel Nathaniel. All the way from Hawaii. All the way from the Hawaiian Daniel, Islands. You have to say his both names. Daniel Nathaniel. Daniel Nathaniel. You have to. Uh, we did in the reserve. We did. Yes. So he we, knows this. We... I played golf yesterday. I bought some pants that are like for colder weather yeah. a while back. Yeah. And so I figure, okay, it's sunny, not a cloud in the sky, 42 degrees. I'm going to try to get out there and do it. I played nine holes, which is all I intended to play, okay. mainly because of time. Yeah. And uh, I got a little bit chilly, but I swear to God, and you've mentioned this before when, we, when we've been out there. This ain't no pinky swear. No, it ain't. Uh, that... Yeah, whatever. We're at a higher latitude, longitude. Yeah, we're higher what? up on the globe. Right? Yes. So we're at about the it, same as I recall with uh, Maine, I believe. We get to, it was three thirty, and the sun was setting on the hills we mm -hmm. have around here. Yep. And when it started going down about three thirty, three forty-five, uh, I started getting chilly. Totally. I started getting chilly. Yeah. We uh, so we went around to a bunch of places yesterday. Um, and when we got back, we just noticed that when we pulled up, it was like 10 degrees colder in front of our house than it was everywhere we went. Right. So it's it's getting cold. I'm getting ready for cold weather where I work. And yeah, it's cold, but I'm, I'm glad you... How many holes did you play? I played nine. Okay. Uh, I parred number two. I didn't think you'd make 18. No, it didn't have That's a, a didn't have time. B, yeah. I, you know... Hi, all six viewers. Sign in if you're here. Sign in on the show page so we can see that you're here and say hi to you. And and comment. Yes, please. Well, yeah. Uh, no, we I, a wouldn't have so had nine. time. B, I would. How'd you have, do? Um, a little worse than normal. You know, yeah. it was cold. wet. It was wet. Yeah. It was cold. Right. You know, you hit a couple where the, throwing some wind. You've got British Open. Well, but it, colder though. Yeah. I mean, not, that's, the British Open's not that cold, at least. You so. know, when you hit a tree root or something, you yeah. know, the, the club vibrates and it's cold, and you sure just, it was a club. Well. <laughs> <laughs> you know, uh, oh, you but know I need to switch to your camera there. Now talk but, more. Uh, I, we need to move these comments over here. I, there we go. Uh, you know, it felt good to be out there swinging a little bit more, bun a lot more bundled up. I think when I took off my stuff yesterday yeah. uh, that I wore above the waist, I think I had six layers on. Jeez. Uh, so I was kind of like the Michelin tire man trying to. I cannot find a jacket I like right now. I, I have this leather jacket that you know I wear a lot. Yeah. And it's, it's fine when the climate is sort of. Um, like t temperate, like sixty, right? It's fine. It's like right. the perfect jacket. But if I wear it like now, 
it's it, it keeps me warm, but it also makes me sweat like fuck. And I, you know, you get in the car after that, and you're just cold because you're you're got right, moisture right. all over you, right? And that sucks. So um, I have another jacket that I usually wear for rain, but I put the liner in it today. Same thing. I was roasting. It was, I mean, I was cooking myself. It was stupid, but well, I'm glad to hear you went golfing. So. Speaking of golf, we're now like a week removed from our November Masters, uh, which I hope a, a few of my friends at least got to volunteer for or participate for back in Augusta. Here's my question. Everybody had, what's it, Bryson DeChambeau, right? Is that his name? Bryson DeChambeau. The, had him winning it by like 10 strokes for because the first he could two hit days, a country they, mile. For the first two days, every shot he yeah. made was on TV. Yeah, because he hits the ball a long way. He hits the ball, he hits like 350 yards, which now, is incredible. I had to go back, and I did a side-by-side -side comparison, a Google side-by-side -side comparison of, of what he looked like last year. Right. And then what happened was when COVID hit in March, he spent all the time, that, that two, three months, just beefing out. I don't know if he used steroids or what, but he just, I mean, he just He's, was He lifting. said, I don't know if he used steroids or what. I love that. That's pretty good. Uh, but he, you know, he just he gained about eighty five pounds. Yeah. of he's huge muscle. He's a big dude. He's huge right. now. Right. He's he's a no joke big guy. So the the pervasive like me going to you really. Right. Right. So the pervasive theme was, of course, that Deshambo, because he could hit the ball farther because of the way Augusta is set up, he would be hitting it about what. 35, 40, 50 yards past right. all of the obstacles, all of the catastrophes, all the bunkers, all the water, whatever. Be able to hit it over corners. And, and he and would just like set that. himself up for these nice little 100-yard sorts of you know, hits and all that. So I didn't watch the first two days at all. I came in on Saturday and saw that he was even, mm -hmm. and Dustin Johnson was already like eight up. Yeah. Then I was like, hmm, I wonder what went wrong. And the thing I think that went wrong is that you can't win a golf course by muscling it. No, it's been proven over and over again. I mean, there's so many people who have talked about this, and it's like you have to be kind of sinewy. My friend Mario is a fantastic golfer. I think, but he's a big guy and he plays very well. But in general, I mean, I've heard golfer, professional after professional, say this: it is not a sport built for guys with you know the, the sort of triangle bods, right? The big, wide yeah. shoulders, and the because the, they can't swing the club right. It's 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 a sinewy sort of movement game. And here comes DeShambo hulking the ball, and it was all about if he got the ball where he wanted to place it. So obviously he was not having good placement. So it goes back to my theory, which always is, and when, about the third shot when you melt down and about the fifth shot when I start melting down is it's all mental, right? It's all a mental sort of thing. If you can get the mental side of that right, you are good to go, and it's been proven over and over again. Well, there was about a day and a half when, what do we always say? Drive for show, right. putt for yeah. go. Yeah. And he couldn't putt. He couldn't hit. He, he, there's a, a commercial or a, 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 on on whatever network you get, yeah. uh, you know, that shows uh, Usain Bolt putting. And the, yes, the, it's the, definitely the, a finesse sport. Yeah. yeah. So anyway, he, he couldn't putt. No. And if you remember when Tiger was winning and winning and winning and winning back in the you know the nineties, yeah, he was hitting the ball further than most people. Right. But Tiger also has a short game. No, he, but he played golf well and he, he wasn't played golf and he did well, right. he did bulk himself up when he went through that whole I think Navy SEAL training period when he kind of lost his amateur hour and all of that. Right. He did, but but he was still he could still But he was still sinewy. Yeah, he's still yeah. sinewy so he could move the ball around the golf course and he could hit generally straight except you know when Tiger got frustrated, he got frustrated, right? So, <laughs> but yeah, I, I, I couldn't agree with you more. It just uh, it was just it, you know, and then Dustin Johnson ran away with it and good for him. He seems like a good dude, a good golfer and all that, but um, you know, it, it just it was one of those things where I was just like, okay, um what happened? You know, all the, you just, yeah. and it's, I guess it's fun to prognosticate and pick a guy and say, oh, he's got a shot. And, you know, it's, it's like every year they seem to think Fred Couples is hitting very well. Fred Couples is 9,718 years old. He may be hitting well, but he's, <laughs> even he's too far removed to win the Masters. Yeah, even Justin point. Thomas said, you know, there, there are a lot of guys. Speaking as Justin Thomas, said, right. there's a lot of guys who can hit further than me. There's a lot of guys that can turn it right. better than me. Right, right. Uh, what I try to do is just be consistent. And he's always, always, always in the top five. Yeah, consistent is, yeah. And in golf, especially where the, you know, the purses, um, 
Make the transition, you dumb computer. Yeah, dumb computer. Why isn't it moving? There we go. Okay. Where golf is, you know, you only have to be in the top five or so. Right. Right? So as long as you're in the top five and you, you're going to make your money, you're going to do that. But, I mean, it's – it's 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 a difficult sport. It's it's one. It's a tough one to keep competitive in and stay good it, it, day in day out. So I mean, you could be you can come in twenty fifth in particular turn like the Masters, right? And still make one hundred fifty thousand dollars, right? Right. So uh, be consistent, hit your stuff, and go on. And that's what I, I you know we we don't play enough to get any better. No. So we kind of plateau and we get mad because we can't hit it 300 yards or or make that I practice six foot putt. Not at all. If if none, very little it doesn't even account for it. So, um, you know, we've been talking sports for almost 10 minutes and we have. we have not heard from Matt Davis in a while. Right. I wonder how. I hope he's okay. I, t- I saw him. I was coming out of the building the other day, but I was in a huge rush. I had to get up to the command center, talk to them about something, and then I missed him on the way out. So Matt, if you're watching, I apologize for that. Didn't couldn't help it. My bad. Uh, but we love you, and we want you to watch the show. Same yes. with Darren. Haven't heard from Darren in a while, but I guess he's sucking up Oklahoma sunsets and driving yes. around in his too big truck. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. He's having a good time down there. All right. So, what did the Sooners do that was so grandiose? So yesterday was Bedlam, and for those of you that don't know, Bedlam is the University of Oklahoma, the OU Sooners, Boomer Sooner against the orange and black Halloween team from Stillwater. They call themselves the Oklahoma State Cowboys. Anyway, uh, so that's Bedlam. And Bedlam is a big deal. Again, it's one of those games kind of like OU Texas where you just throw the records out and the game's played. Uh, Yesterday – One of my favorite sports cliches ever, by the way. Yeah, so it's it's most definitely a cliche. So DeVry Technical Institute and the Mormon Tabernacle Choir. You throw throw the the records records out, out. Keith, when they're together. That's right. Uh, So – uh, the final score was 41-13 Oh, OU. that's an ass whooping. Yeah. I so, thought it was like a 55-53 sort of. Usually it is The way you portrayed like it. No, usually it is like that. Right. So you were just celebrating an ass whooping. I was just game. celebrating an ass whooping. I would, I would much rather see the Sooners or the Cowboys win in a lopsided victory yeah. than a close one because the close one just makes my stomach gurgle. <laughs> so... Uh, <laughs> Uh, and like the, the, the quadruple overtime when OU beat Texas earlier this year. Right. Holy cow. I, wow. Anyway, so that was Bedlam. OU is now, uh, six and two, I believe. Uh, but they lost those two early in the season to okay. Iowa state and Kansas state. It's a so, weird season. We talked about that. Yeah. Right? So they may not even be in the conference championship. Who knows? Well, and tell me about that. these shoes you wanted. So. I needed to get a new pair of shoes. The Asics I had uh, were getting worn out a little bit. I just broke a pair, actually. Yesterday. So um, I'm, I've always been a Nike guy. And so I went to the BX to and look at Nike. They appreciate that. And uh, the BX didn't have a lot of Nikes and had zero Nikes in my I noticed stock. that, too, actually. Uh, it, it seemed like they were more robust at some point, and now they are not. Exactly. They had a whole mm-hmm. siding of them for a while, now right, none. Right. So I went home. Uh, after buying these new Asics, and I thought, you know what? I'm a grown ass man. <laughs> I, I have my own money, and if I want to buy some Air Jordans, I go back. I had, uh, as I was telling you earlier, first of all, my first pair of Nikes I had were in Wiesbaden, the the blue nylon with mm-hmm. the yellow swoosh. Okay. The original pair of Nikes. Yeah. I had San Diego the, Chargers colors. Yes. Yeah. I had the second edition of the Air Jordans back in 1983, mm-hmm. uh, the black and red ones. So I thought, let me see what those would cost today. You know, maybe a couple of hundred dollars. Holy shit stakes. The cheapest pair I could find. Of the, and they're not like from 1983. Yeah. They're 2020 shoes yeah. made to look like the 1983 pair right. that I wore for two and a half years straight and, and they started falling apart. The cheapest pair I could find was $1,250. So you do know that sneaker culture is a thing, right? Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So, I mean, yeah. that, that it is a real bona fide subculture like cosplay and things like that. Oh, yeah. And it's, I, it's taken very aware. seriously and people collect the shoes. You know, they may wear them once, but most of the time they collect them. I wrote, I was in the BX with you, and I saw that they had some very interesting styles, and I was like, eh, nothing I would wear. And I'm in the market for a new pair of sneakers, but I just didn't see anything like. Plus, it's hard for me to find sneakers at the BX because um, Sasquatch? I have gigantic feet. Um, and because of that, I have gigantic wide feet. Mm-hmm. So I have to 
go into the BX and be like, okay, maybe they have 13s, but do they have 13 Ws? Now, you, I, we talked about this a little before the show. The reason why I can't buy Nikes, but I want to, uh, is because they don't make a wide shoe. Nike has narrow shoes. Nike has narrow fucking shoes. And They're like skinny jeans for feet. And that's kind of what I, why I switched to a different brand. Right. And uh, because with diabetes, I don't need anything constricting my feet. Right. Uh, skinny jeans. What did you feet. get? Sakani? No, these are uh, uh, Asics. Asics. No, those are Asics. Right. <laughs> I wasn't sure. I couldn't see the there's Chuck no Taylors. brand. They're Chuck Taylors. You got kids. Yeah, no, no, they're, they're Asics. Garanimal shoes or something like that. They're Asics. Yeah, but it pisses me off because I really I really like Nikes too, and I want to buy a pair. I, I you know I'm, I'm not like I'm loyal or anything. I'll buy whatever's generally in the clearance rack. To be honest, but they don't do a very good. <laughs> Clearance rack. They, even Garmish, they did a good clearance rack of shoes. Here, they don't do a very good clearance rack of shoes, to be fair. So oh. it's just, you know, it, it's crazy um, that uh, there, there just usually isn't anything there for me to wear. So I can't uh, I can't put that on. So that's that's what I wanted to tell you is I can't wear Nikes. I got sent this from Yvonne. I got to find it. Where did it go? She sent me a per the perfect Christmas present. Here it is. It's kale-flavored candy canes. They're coming to ruin Christmas for all the children. Kale flavored candy. Kale flavored candy. Get the hell out of here with yeah. that. Yeah, and so this is a running joke between her and I. Um, whenever I see something kale, um, I will uh, immediately pitch it to her and say, "Hey, I found your your comfort food or something like that or anything kale." So this is, we've done this for years. So now she's pitching me kale stuff, and I can't stand kale. Um, all right, so let's talk about this documentary that's on. Um, Actually, it's, let's do the break first. This is this show is a JK with your pals Jason and Keith. We're on once a week on Sundays at 5 p.m. Eastern, 11 a.m. Eastern, or I'm sorry, 5 p.m. Europe, 5, 11 a.m. Eastern, and 6 a.m. Daniel Nathaniel time. Um, so we are here uh, and trying to keep this regular as possible. And uh, we'll have a set change coming up soon. But this is how we are now. <laughs> yeah, the McPickle, right, Daniel? So I think this is what happened. I think I pulled into the lot and they gave someone else my burger. Um, but I still ate it. I was hungry. I mean, I'll eat a McPickle. What the hell, right? Anyway, there's this show on HBO Max called The Vow. It's a mini series. Okay. And it's essentially a documentary about a cult that was started in New York uh, that had the – it's a multi-level marketing organization, and the founder had – been convicted of frauding people scheme. out of money. Yep, Ponzi scheme. Ponzi uh, and he was actually told not to do that kind of Ponzi scheme again, but he ended up doing this one. But it's a it, it was a executive coaching and a positive thing and a life changing thing. But we're, what it really turned out to be was a sex cult, oh. and it was very interesting for about the first three episodes. Is this the one where the the girl from that I had a big crush on from uh, Smallville? Yeah, Allison Mack. Allison was Mack. It? Yeah, she was in jail. Yeah, that's a shame. Spoiler alert. <laughs> anyway, my problem isn't with the content. I'm I was really interested in it because, you know, how far can we go back with cults? Jim Jones at that uh, oh, yeah. guy in town, or you know, cults that exist now. Heaven's Gate. Heaven's Gate. That's the one I was really fascinated with. That was early '90s with the shoes and everything else. And I mean, you can go on and on with cults. They are amazingly fascinating, right? Um, Scientology is considered a cult in Germany. Oh really? Yeah, yeah. It's and, and Tom Cruise has been trying to change that for a very long time. I don't know if he's had any luck with it to get it made into a religion like it is in the United States, so they could operate tax free. You know, have all the comforts accorded to that. But I don't know that he's been successful at it. So, so anyway, it's a good documentary. It really is. But so you have some filmmaking experience, and I have not watched your movie yet. I apologize. I haven't had time. I'm going to make it a priority for the next show. I fully expect to be given a rational shot. I, I, well, I'll write up a full review. Okay. Nexium, yes. Thank you, Daniel. So my problem is not with the uh, the content or, or the, the the you know what they're trying to do. I was fascinated by it, and the, and the dude is a little. You have to see the the comedy special, The Ruddles, which was a Saturday Night Live thing. It air, it's about an hour long. Did and you say The Wiggles? The Ruddles. Ruddles. R-U-T-L-E-S. Um, and it's a takeoff of The Beatles. This was like 1975 or 76. And Paul McCartney like hated it. They all hated it, actually. I think Harrison was okay with it. Uh, and, and Ringo, of course, he's okay with everything. But they hated it. They fucking hated it. <laughs> 
so anyway, in the middle of that, there is this, uh, that, you know, they all start to get high and take LSD and they have this guru who uh, escorts them to a place. And this guy who runs this cult looks like this guru from the Ruddles. That's all okay. I can think of. But anyway, if you haven't seen the Ruddles, highly recommend. Give it a shot. Funny. Anyway, my point with the vow is it's nine episodes long. So again, you've worked in cinema a bit. You worked in TV. Your job is to take the two hours of footage that you've shot, or in case of cinema, hundreds of hours of footage you've shot, and condense that into 90 minutes to, hundred say, 150 minutes, right? Now, every documentary I've seen uh, that's done well, it can go two hours and just be riveting. Uh, right. The What was the big one with the guy who did the, the McDonald's thing? That was interesting to watch. I mean, we can go on and on. This is nine episodes. This is nine hours long. It's as if they said, and it literally is when you're watching it, it it's as if you said, um, we, while you were watching this, you know, while you were producing it, you know, instead of saying, no, 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 we got to take that out. We got to, it's like you said, no, let's just fucking put it all in. Wow. Let's just put it all in. I mean, every phone call, every like emotional bounce, every, everything is in this fucking documentary and it's just painful to watch. So while you were coming in tonight, we were on episode eight and episode eight is where they finally fucking catch up to the guy and arrest him. But I, you know, we, we were doing the show, but you know, it, we, my wife and I have been sitting watching these things and I don't like to binge TV. I barely like to watch TV, but the first episode I watched with her, I was hooked. So I'm like, all right, this is the one I'll do. And sure enough, it is, it is just, you know, 20 second delay with what sound over what's being seen. I hope that's not the case. How's our bit rate? It's fine. The bitrate is fine. That's why when we're saying a 20 second frames. delay with what, I guess he'll, uh, yeah, there's no drop frames. Yeah. So we're good. So that's weird. All right. Thanks, I, Daniel. It seems like everything's okay from here. But anyway, nine episodes, and they're doing a second season of that. <laughs> so there's not a second season of The Lion King yet. No. So the, the, I think there's something important to remember here is H, when HBO decided to do HBO Max, and and when AT and T took over, I think it's AT and T. Yeah, AT and T took over, and um, oh, they're okay with the comments. Okay, thanks, Daniel. We appreciate that. Um, they put an edict out that said content, 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 right. content, because they needed shit to put on, right? So if you were a producer or a filmmaker or, or some kind of you know content creator, congratulations. You, you know that you probably had a great chance of finding something on HBO Max. But this is what we're given, right? So we, we're suddenly watching nine hours of a documentary that really should only be um, about 90 minutes to 120 minutes. I felt the same frustration, and I bet Daniel did too, when the fucking Hobbit movies came out. And I loved the first one. I, I was one of the few who really liked the first one. The second one left a lot to be desired, but it was still cool. But I, I remember I was with my friend Tom. Tom Collette, who's an Oberammergau right now. He just came back to Germany. Great dude. Loved going to the film with this guy. But when we were done, at the end, so I'm not, I, if you haven't seen the movie, whatever, but at the end of the movie is when the dragon decides to fly off and go and, you know, destroy the town. And that's when he shoots the black girl and kills the guy. But it didn't happen in the second movie. And when the movie cut to credit, because I, we were only one of the two or five people in the theater for it, I, I literally <laughs> went, mother fuck! Because they didn't kill the dragon in this movie. I was pissed. They saved it for the third movie? They saved it for the really, really shitty third movie. Wow. And it's horrible. So there's the trend now, and I, I wanted to get your opinion on this. There's a trend now to just drag shit out. Now, Lord of the Rings was different. I'm a big Lord of the Rings film fan. Huge Lord of the Rings film fan. But there's a lot to story to tell there. Yeah. yeah. The Hobbit, he made a lot of shit up to also made it up like the Radagast, who's I think mentioned once or twice in any of the books, and the Blue Wizard and all of this, and then the stuff that he inserted to tie it back to the Lord of the Rings, so that if you were had never seen the Lord of the Rings, it tied you back to this film, right? It was just, it's it just, it was. I think that if you buy all three editions, it's like nine hours, nine hours to what should have been a two and a half hour movie tops. So I found out recently, getting off tangent a little bit, I found out recently that Topher Grace, you know, um, actor from that '70s show, he's done a yeah, bunch yeah, of yeah. really good shit. His boredom thing is to take bad movies and edit them down. 
So he took all three of the Hobbit movies and made them into one cohesive movie. And I'm like, I fucking want to see that, but it's not available anywhere. Of course. Now, folks have done that with like the Star Wars prequels and things yeah. like that. And I think I have that on my media drive. But I really want to see Topher Grace's Hobbit. And I was thinking in my head, maybe I should just do it at home. I've got the files on my media drive. I should just edit my own. Anyway, do you, I guess the question is, do you see this? Do you see them stringing us out now instead of just here's a show? Because that's the trend I've noticed in media over the last 10 years is you don't get to complete whatever you're doing. We're going to leave it hanging for the next season. And that's just TV tradition. I get that. But it's being done more so in films. That's why they made The Dark Tower, yeah. the Stephen King book, again. Basically, it was like 86 minutes, which is unheard of. Any movie of any worth goes 90 minutes. And then all it was done was to set up a Dark Tower TV series, which they never fucking made. Right. So anyway, my point is what I see is – What's happened is, you know, content creation, drag things out um, so you can subscribe, so you can continue to watch month after month, blah, 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 blah. That's, that's my whole point. I agree. And even with the, the things I've watched lately, uh, I, I mentioned before we came on this show that I watched uh, The Boys. And oh, yeah. uh, I enjoyed it, but there were parts of it that were slow. Okay, right. we could have done without that. We could have done without that character. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. You know, that kind of thing. Uh Netflix is uh, towards the end, not yet at the end, of the second season, third season, third season mm. of Discovery, Star Trek Discovery. Oh, right. Yes. Which I, I enjoy. That I do want to see. I just haven't seen. I enjoy it. I just think that, like, maybe this uh, this episode I just watched, that it came out yesterday, could have done without it. It, it didn't further the... Further the uh, series. Need to fix your mic stand so like the crinkle goes down like mine does. See if you can do that. No, no, push it up. No, up, up. That's down. So let's try up now. That's up. Yep. Keep going. Now bring the other part in. Keep pushing up. Crinkle down. Keep going. Keep going. Yep. Yep. I see what you're doing here. Okay. Yeah, I'm trying to make it so we can see. I don't your, know if you can articulate. Your, see your face a little bit. There you go. Do you really need? To, oh. Is it not moving? All right, we'll put it back the way it was. I just want to have people to be able to see your pretty yeah, face. Yeah, I just put my hand right here. Yeah, all right. Uh, anyway. So, um, I forgot where I was. Uh, anyway, you know, could have done without that episode. It didn't further the show at all. Uh, and, you know, different characters. Oh, that's, she's, she's just one. She's always, always uh, going against orders, going against orders. Yet she's still... You know, in second in charge of this star shit, you know, yeah, whatever, yeah, yeah. you know, things like that, character, character things, but, um, but yeah, I have noticed that, especially, especially. Thank you, Ernie. Good to see you, my brother. Who's that? Ernie Bolden. He was a husband. Hey, I, yeah, I know Ernie. Yeah. Ernie knows me. There we go. We know each other from Altus. What's happening, brother? We drink a lot at the office bar so in Altus. Just to kind of wrap up my piece on this, I don't watch a lot of TV. And the reason why I don't watch a lot of TV is because I feel like I, there's something else I need to do. And every time I sit down to watch TV like I did with her and, and The Vow today, I feel guilty because I feel like there's something else I should be up and doing, you know, drawing or, or whatever, that something more productive I could be doing. And, I, and I'm not saying TV watching is productive. If it entertains you, it takes you away, I get it. But in my head, I don't feel productive, right? So I don't watch a lot of TV. So every time I, you know, I hear about like the boys is interesting to me, but it hasn't compelled me enough to actually sit down in front of this TV and go, all right, I'll watch the boys now or anything like that. So that's my, my own internal thing with television is just, I can't commit to, especially binge watching. There's no fucking way right. in hell I would sit here for I don't have, yeah. seven, eight hours. And I didn't do it with the Mandalorian. And I've, I watched the first episode this year and I've totally missed the other two. So I've got to go back and catch those. But TV time is not like scheduled for me. It's just like, oh, I right, I missed the Mandalorian. Okay, I guess I'll fit that in on Tuesday, right? Because the, the I don't know, and it's not an elitist thing. It's just I don't watch TV anymore, and and it's, you know, just that's just what it is. I uh, I watch a lot of TV because I have no social life, <laughs> so uh, it's it's interesting. You know, I didn't watch a lot of TV <laughs> with. Uh, when I was doing the play, right? But I would record it. There are things that I like to watch, right? Uh, I like a lot of the fire shows. You know, this, the the uh, Chicago Fire. The they have like every Chicago Fire, Chicago. Yeah, they MD, just started. They they went back to back to back to back. Yeah, they have like Chicago um, it's, Messenger Service, Chicago <laughs> Uber, uh, Chicago <laughs> Uber Eats, the Chicago Seven Eleven, uh, Chicago. Yes. You know, they have all that stuff. 
You know, you think they didn't do that because Obama was president? And he's like, hey, uh, I'm from Chicago. Uh, but, you know, anyway, the, the shows I like, I record. And uh, it's interesting because uh, one I'm watching right now, which I find really intriguing, is Prodigal Son. And that has Michael Sheen in it as a... Oh, yeah, he's good. He's a surgeon that commit, w was a serial killer. Yep. And now his kids, want the, the, the hot daughter, if you will, is a uh, watches, TV folks. reporter. No, she has, a know. she has a small part. And uh, the did you ever watch Walking Dead? No. Okay. But I've met the Walking Dead creators. They're very nice people. Cool. Uh, Keith Hewen will tell you that. One of the characters that came about in this... Uh, last couple of seasons is now not on there anymore. It was a character named Jesus. Well, the guy who plays Jesus is the lead character in Prodigal Son, who is now a, a oh, yeah. serial killer profiler. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. And uh, so anyway, so he goes to his dad, and then, yeah, anyway, it. I'm really enjoying the show. Okay. Uh, so that's must see TV mm -hmm. to coin a phrase. Uh, that's good, and I and I yeah. I fully respect that, and I fully respect respect that people have got their shows. And to a degree, I get why people binge watch. Right. Uh, if the story gets you, the story gets you. My problem is I've just been very disappointed with a lot of things that I thought I would be invested in. And um, <clears throat> like this, The Vow, I'm like, I'm, I'm eight episodes in and I'm like, get to the fucking point. <laughs> Seriously. Yeah. So anyway, speaking of TV, people are bitching and complaining. I wasn't talking to you, Siri Hush. Yeah, shush. Judge, um, uh, they cannot get PlayStation Fives or Xbox is right now. So just so you know, I have in fact checked with um, the BX and Bomb Holder, and my friend Sean, there are none there. Uh, I don't know that there are any at Ramstein, but Black Friday is coming up, so they maybe have a pallet in the back. Um, and how they're doing Black Friday is fairly interesting too. Um, but apparently people are also going to Best Buy, and Best Buy is saying, yes, we have them, like my friend Dees Cassius, who puts out Four Rounds Comics, who does a great podcast, who does a great web strip. I highly recommend his stuff. He's a good friend, and I, and I really appreciate him. Uh, but he's trying to get a PlayStation, and Best Buy keeps saying when he's going through the order process that, yep, we have them, we've got them, and they ain't got them. So Dees has been having some difficulty with that, and uh, just trying to get one. So... I still have an Xbox One. I play it one every month and a half. <laughs> That's you know. Since I keep saying I should sit down and play Madden football today. Like I was trying to play a Madden game before every week of the NFL season. Ah, I fell out of that. And part of it is because we started doing this again, which is good, better. Um, but I just sort of fell out of it. I've got games on my computer uh, through Steam that I play occasionally. The Flight Sim I haven't played. Hardly at all in the last three months, but mostly because I've been focused on other things. You know that. And then I have a PlayStation 4 right there, which has been played maybe three times. Wow. Because my, my daughter was like, hey, I really want to get these games. And she played them, and then it just sort of happened. I'm appreciative and, and thankful that I have the means to get these things, so I'm not bitching. But I don't. I probably am going to get an Xbox 5 or whatever it's called now, Xbox du jour, whatever. Probably I'm going to get one, but I know I'm not going to get one now because I also know that you know when you buy first-run anything – Right, it's not great, and you're waiting for software updates and everything else. So I'm going to wait six months, which is what April, May. There'll be thousands of them, probably. Yeah. And I get that you want to get it on Christmas and you want to do all the right things and you know get it, but you're not as crazy about it, right? You do have one because we play golf on it. Before, yeah, I have. And... A, I bought. That's what I bought myself last Christmas. Right. Was the uh, Xbox One X. Yep. And uh, but like you said, you know, you, I, I've you, played more. You played the division for a while, right? No. What was the game that you borrowed? I forgot. The golf. Uh, oh, okay. Yeah. Well, I remember that. I thought I'd give you another one. But okay. No, I haven't started any of those yet. Yeah. See, I just, exactly. I, that, that, I don't play Exactly. It. And I'm uh, not sure why I want to get an Xbox other than it's kind of a home entertainment console, too, because I can run the media server through it and yes. watch movies and I can do other things. So it serves a, a, a kind of a dual purpose other than being just an Xbox, you know, even to not play the games, which is what they wanted to do in the first place. I have played The only thing we more... can't do is I can't run any AF AFN through it. It doesn't really uh -huh. work. And I don't want to keep the Xbox on all the time. So right. I've played more DVDs for right. my Xbox One, One X than I have exactly, games. Exactly, exactly. Yeah. So good luck to Dees getting his Xbox, I mean his PlayStation. But I just don't think any are going to be available until, you know, January, but that's, the way, that's yeah. the way they've done it. It's supply and demand, and they want to create, 
you know, create fear and that's how they sell, blah, 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 blah. They're expensive too. And supposedly the, the knock on both platforms now, there's Annabelle. Hi, Annabelle. Hi, Annabelle. Hello. But right. knock on both platforms right now. Uh, I have it over here. It's charging my phone. I'll give it back to you when I'm done. Um, is that the digital version of both boxes sucks. And basically you're just buying electrons and you don't, you have, there's no sort of way that you're going to be able to know to keep those games or, you know, you're not buying it. What? No, like that. That's what I'm doing to, to keep those games to, um, to be able to, you know, have that content. You, you, it's, I get that we're moving to, we're very much at, service as sure. software as a service to yeah. we're there we have to subscribe to as much as i don't want to be but yeah either i i can't believe people subscribe to razors but i mean that's their thing whatever um hey, don't knock that that helped but me apparently the day. digital box isn't working very well either so i would still go for the disc box so uh i want to share this and can i mention another facebook page yeah of course. am i allowed to okay yeah. so i was just scrolling through my page uh Last week, I think it was over last weekend. I think. Oh, wait, oh that's a that's a cute. Oh, that's a cool post. You know, where's that from? It's from this Facebook page called Funny Science Fiction. All right, and then there were some a lot of other funny memes on it. Whatever, all science fiction related, and you can tell it's run and and the members are a bunch of science fiction nerds okay that's my favorite people oh man yeah I, I felt kinship uh so i just posted this thing i found on my regular facebook page and it was no you know, it's not george you're suckered in by a shave club that's what you are yeah well again don't knock that because that saved me one day uh <laughs> uh anyway because it's not just shaving stuff. It's also... No, no, I get it. Yeah. yeah. Anyway, uh, so I found... It's not like to subscribe to anything. Yeah, it's, Keep going. it's one of these uh, memes that has Spock with his arm around Princess Leia. Right. You know, and he's holding some kind of weird thing that has no relation to either one of them. And it says, we're going to rescue the TARDIS and take the... The Battlestar Galactic, you know, just mixes all kinds yeah, of. That's fun. Of, I like those. those yeah. Are you get. So I just posted it to this page, my first post, and holy shit! <laughs> as of, I, I checked right before I came over here, so I could talk about it. That post that I made has more than a thousand reactions. Wow. More than forty shares, and Keith likes to be liked. I, I mean, it, it just stuns me right. that something like that happens with some simple meme. I've always not felt the simpler is better, especially in social media, and that's really how it goes. So well, that's good. So, so that's a good group. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I think so. It's a lot of funny stuff, and but a lot of well, that wouldn't happen because of this, and right. and the, you know the warp drive would. Be, okay, yeah, fine. Yeah, yeah. That, I'm good with that. I like, a lot of Star like Wars conversations occasionally. A lot of Star Wars versus Star Trek. There are always conversation. Is, yeah. yeah, I've been jettisoning a lot of. So I've, there's a few celebrities that I follow on t on uh, not Twitter on uh, Instagram. Mm, I don't mm -hmm. do Twitter anymore. I still have an account, and like before I came on, I I wanted to check what was trending, but I'll, we'll talk about that in a minute. Um, but what I, um, I do do Instagram and I like Instagram. I don't do it that often, but I, I need to do it more because of the comic book and everything else. And, um, but I follow a few celebrities and a few comedians cause I like stand certain stand up comedians. I think, you know, they, they're, they're funny right. and I wanted to be a stand up comedian for a very long time. And that's Annabelle. She's over there. And, um, but lately I'm getting sick and tired. Uh, there's three people in particular who I unfollowed who had just started shoveling the shit they're sent for free and just oh, like, yeah. look, I'm opening this box full of stuff. And yeah. it's got, look, it's got a, it's got hair gel. The it's, got a factor. it's got a Magnum condom. It's got guitar strings and it's got an Eagle's beak. Oh boy. That's fun. Who cares? I don't give a shit what they send you for free. Wow. So that's, you know, I get influencers. I get that, you know, they're like, Oh, if you push this product, and it's one thing, like one of the celebrities that I followed had a cooking segment on her Facebook or uh, Instagram stories. And the cooking segment was sponsored by whatever fucking farm to table whole grain right. Yahoo group it was, which is, I'm cool with that. But at least you're honest about it. You know, you're not just, oh, hey, Keith, do you like Doritos? You know, and it's just, it, it's, it's, it, you know, it's advertising. And I don't like when you're just being manipulated to buy things. And that's what it is. It's just manipulated. I don't like yeah, it. Yeah, it's that's how people that are famous, who are famous just for being famous, yeah. drive me batshit crazy. The Kardashians could fall off the planet Earth and I wouldn't care 
one bit. Well, I mean, these are I, look. I'm not faulting the people who I followed. They earned I'm, all five of the ones who I really liked really earn their way to where they are. I'm cool with that. You know, stand up comedians, um, uh, certain songwriters and singers, things like that. And I ended up and I ended up unfollowing like three. I think two were stand up comedians and one was someone else. And I just said, I don't need this. Sure. If you want to generate content and talk about how stupid your kid is or your pool, I, I'm semi interested in that because I find you to be an interesting human being who I have some things in common with, and that's kind of how it works, right? We associate ourselves with the person who's on the other side of that. Totally cool with that, but I'm not cool with. Oh, I was in my pool the other day, and then I had a Coke Zero. You know, I'm just like, okay, look what's in this box. Product oh, placement. They no. just sent me this, and I'm so happy, and they're so nice. Oh, fuck that. I they mean, don't send on. me that shit. So. So go Stupid. away. Stupid. You're, you're watching and listening because and this one will be on audio since we fixed that shit. You're watching. Um, uh, this show is a JK with your pals, Jason and Keith. Again, we're here once a week. We'll be back on iTunes as of this week. That episode ah. should be available uh, tomorrow because uh, I usually can't get them done the same night. But it should be available tomorrow for download. So if you missed any of this in video, uh, don't worry. Uh, it'll be There will be an audio-only version of this and maybe if we get time, we'll do audio only as well. Those actually were easier to do because we could just sit at a table with the recorders and go at it. Um, but, uh, yeah, we, we enjoy our, our podcast and we hope you'll get along. We have not. So part of uh, our problem here today is we couldn't start a watch party and that was kind of sucky. Weird. Yeah. So um, that – we don't get as many of you here as we'd like, and we know there were many of you. Look at that. That's pretty cool, right? Let me see if I can fix that. I can't even read that shit. I know. That's pretty funny. Um there were many of you who tuned in because we had started a watch party, and we totally dig that. Um, all right, we'll just leave it that way. Um, who had joined us through the watch party, but now it doesn't seem to be working right. Maybe my software needs to be updating, but we'll figure that Maybe out for Facebook next time. Maybe Facebook fucked that up, too. Yeah, but anyway, we're all slaves to Facebook in some way. So um, in any case, uh, we're here uh, for an hour every Sunday, and we're usually talking about things like COVID and sports and you know, just things that you can sort of pass the time with us and join in the comments and, and say things like George Brown did, like Dollar Shave Club is awesome, and, you know, he's wrong. So um, that's okay. I mean, but if that's his jam, that's his jam. I don't fault people for what they do, but for me, it's wrong. So mm. John Cleese was trending today, and I thought, oh, fuck. Yeah. What happened to John Cleese? Well, nothing, first of all. That's good. It's fine. He scared uh, me. But he was defending something. I think he was defending J.K. Rowling oh, for the comments yeah. that she made about trans people. But apparently the comments that she made about trans people were not sort of printed with full context or something like that. Um, like she said, if I read the thing I read correctly, she was actually defending trans people that, they, you know, that, that – they should. They have a place in the world, and we should protect them. And da, da. she was actually, I thought, very forthright and very good about it. So maybe I'm missing something, but I, I think so. He's getting berated on Twitter today. He's not dead. So I didn't really find anything else trending worth the shit, other than you know just the usual stuff, fantasy football. Did you uh, nothing? And then I'm not following the election shit anymore. I don't care. No, I, I don't care. So uh, if we want to get into COVID a little bit, because we always do. First of all, let me let me talk about football real quick. Uh, and then I'll go into COVID. Drew Brees, he was injured last week. It's like 71 broken ribs or something? 11 <sighs> fractured ribs. He's tiny, too. That, that, that he's hurts. not a big guy. No, he's he's a little taller than you. I think he's like 5'10", 5 5'11". 5 well, I'm 5'10". So, right, yeah, so he's, he's going right. to maybe 5'11", 6 feet. Yeah. Then. yeah I'm 6'3", so I think they he's They always say short. 6 feet. They yeah. always say 6 yeah. feet. Yeah, yeah. yeah. That's standing on concrete. Yeah, I'm six with three, cleats on. so I'm a tall guy. So I mean, I always think everyone's yeah. shorter than me. No, he's not. He's not the biggest guy in the world. No, uh, but he's been awesome. But yeah, I, I reacted the way you did. Holy shit, he's got 11, like 900 broken now, ribs. Those could be like you know hairline fractures and broken. things like that. Still broken. You can't play. When you with do this. <sighs> hurts like fuck. I haven't had a broken rib, but I can testify that I know people who have. And when uh -huh. you do this. Hurts like fuck. I've had a bruised sternum, and that hurt yeah. like a some bitch. Yeah. So yeah. So uh, COVID, my, the town I called home for the last fourteen years, Lawton, uh, Oklahoma. Lawton, Oklahoma. Lawton, Fort Sill made the ABC national news uh -oh. uh, over the, uh, uh, the the I think it was Thursday. Okay. And what it was was ABC News just found a place in Middle America. Lawton, Oklahoma. Lawton, Oklahoma. And they went to the hospitals and said, there's two hospitals in Lawton. Right. How are you doing? Mm -hmm. 
And uh, they went to one Comanche County. That's the county, surprisingly enough. So it's called Comanche County. Uh, Comanche County Memorial Hospital. Right. I know their PIO very well. When I was a TV reporter in Lawton, she was a production assistant. Right. Now she's doing what we do for the hospital. Uh, so she set that up. Uh, and um, Nicole Jolly is how I know her. Uh, I know that, Nicole Jolly Kaufman. And uh, so Matt Gutman from ABC News went there. And the thing that got me was they, you know, they can give you the statistics. We are full. We are at capacity. Right. They interviewed a doctor uh, who I know vaguely. And the doctor said. Don't you know most people vaguely? I, at least I've Not met, me I've met him. Oh, all right, all I've right. met him. So an acquaintance. Uh, uh, I've met him once. Something short of an acquaintance. Yes. All right. Go ahead. Okay. So I uh, and, and they and Matt Gutman asked the doctor, you know, are you how are you situated on COVID patients? He said we are out of. Uh, I've just lost my thing. Not defibrillators. Dead space. But, uh, Breathing machines. What do you call them? Oh, uh, respirators. Respirators. Thank you. The thing that they're at the beginning of this. Yeah, respirators. Right. And so I-44 runs from, you know, through Missouri, down through Tulsa, down through Oklahoma City, down through Lawton, through Wichita Falls. Right. And um, so he said, what if Matt Gutman asked, what if there's an accident, a five-car accident, a 10-car accident right out here on I-44? And you need respirators. And, and the doctor behind the mask started tearing yeah, up yeah, yeah. and said, we wouldn't be able to help them. Right. We had to take a, a portable respirator out of an ambulance to bring it into the hospital. Right. So when people are still saying this is fake, oh, it's just the flu. Oh, it's a hoax. That's what gets my hackles up. It drives me crazy. And then, of course, we watch, because of our position, right. we watch the numbers go up around the world. Right. So it's tough. I, I discovered today that um, – I'll put it this way. Do you remember in The Rock, um, the general played by Ed Harris is having a conversation with one of his evil subordinates? And um, – no, he's having a conversation with Nick Cage and something like that. And he goes uh, – they were having the conversation, and Nick Cage says something like, uh, I thought you weren't going to shoot any people. And he goes, I'm warming up. <laughs> it's a great line, and, I, and, and the way it's written is well written. Well, uh, I, I, you know, I've been trying to be very resilient and, and you know, and just you know, try to be positive. You'd want to try to help people, and it sucks everywhere. And we've all got our oar in the water on this. Uh, and you see people just sort of, you know, they got to take a knee, they got to step aside, they got to do. It. And today I noticed was my day where I was like, I'm warming up. I'm a little, I'm not fatigued, but I'm like, this is getting old. And and, and by this, I mean um, the routine, right? And, and the routine is what we have to do, and I get it. And there's days when you can just go, all right, we'll just, and you know, when you work eight hours a day, it's it's just one of those things where, you know, you just work and, you know, you, at the end of the day, you come out. But now it's like today, we're like, where can we go? Well, there's nowhere to go. All right, well, we can go to the BX. We went to the BX yesterday. Okay, well, what else can we do? Well, let's go on a hike. So we went on a hike up, up by Launch Tool, and that was great. Great pictures, Although by the way. Annabelle, like, almost got lost, and that was kind of scary, but because she had separated and whatever. But um, that's it. And, and nothing's open in Germany on Sunday anyway, except for right. restaurants. You can't go to restaurants because we're back to takeout only. I mean, we're not. Every, it's not that everything's closed, but you can't go to a, you know, a place. So... I'm warming up. I'm warming up, and it's it's you know I'm 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 reaching a point where it's like let's let's go let's let's get this done right and and so um, you know I anyway I'm still fine. It's just I just I had a moment today where I was like this is this is this can be I see how this can be fatiguing for many many people. And yet there were still supposed to be protests here in Kaiser or around yesterday. Germany yeah, yesterday yesterday from people who who. Don't want to do the mitigation efforts. Don't want to do these things. And I get it. Everybody's tired of it. Yep. And uh, and to go back to the very beginning, what is it, 60 shows now, 55 shows? This is why we started this, this podcast. Because we wanted to we wanted to explain to people, we wanted to explain to you, 
Okay, we're expats. We live in Germany. He's new to Germany as an adult. As an adult. So he's experiencing Germany. Uh, so we wanted to kind of bring you some flavor and some feel for a couple of people who are experiencing this firsthand and experiencing it in a way that is, you know, you're experiencing it in a country that you're not familiar with it and just how Germany does it differently from anybody else. And then it just, it went into high gear and we were doing two shows a week and we were talking about these countries turning red and then all the businesses closed. And then we hit HP con Charlie, which basically shut everything, everything down, down and we basically had to sit on our asses at home and do nothing. So what is it this week? This week it's don't have people over Thanksgiving. Don't, uh, don't go somewhere and, you know, have a bunch of people in a room, right? Don't spread. Don't do this. Don't do that. And so we're almost back to where we were. I think what May, June, whatever it was, we had the, the, the lockdown lockdown, but we've, we've seen how different measures can be put in place to still allow some freedom of movement for us to go to work. Folks are still teleworking. Folks are still, you know, um, taking leave. Uh, people are still highly vulnerable. Um, so again, it's still there, right? And so when we started this, we wanted to explain to you, yeah, this is how it works here. Uh, here's, you know, here's what's happening on our jobs. There are a lot of people who are hurting. There are a lot of people out of work. There are a lot of people who, right? You know, it's, it's been a hell of a period of time. I don't like to blame things on 2020, right? No, that's... I, 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 I just, people want to, you know, they want to say, oh, it's when 2021 comes... 2021 is just another sunrise, right? Just like tomorrow is another sunrise. So it can either be better with you tomorrow or you think you're going to wake up on 2021 and you think you're going to be better and, and do great things then. Uh, like right now is when I want to start doing it right now. I'm not waiting till 2021. I, I wish right. we didn't have clocks other than to say we have another nine minutes to go. <laughs> but I don't really care, you know, uh, clocks. I mean, it, you, you have to focus on doing great things now, taking care of people now, doing everything you can now, putting your back in now, and not thinking that some imaginary made-up timeline that helps commerce, the clocks are commerce, that's always been one of my favorite phrases, um, is going to make a, a significant improvement after the ball drops in New York City. It, it's just not going to happen. So, I mean, I'm, I'm not one of those guys, but, you know, again... If you just look at the sort of time period where COVID has been, it's right. It did what it did this. And mm -hmm. then we were kind of in the middle for a while where it's like, oh, we can go out to eat. That's great. We can do this. Semi-normal. So you still couldn't go to big events. You couldn't go to movies, things like that. But, you know, we're back sort of at the, um, no, we were on at five, dad. Um, but welcome. But welcome to Fantasy Island. But, you know, it's. <laughs> Which it's, was a shitty movie, by the way. <laughs> I love the show, though. I was the up show every was great. Thursday at 10 o'clock watching that show up in my room. Um, it was Love Boat, then Fantasy Island. So, um, yeah, like I said, I'm warming up. And, you know, that's why we do this podcast, because it could be talking about what we know and a little therapy for ourselves and to get shit like this off our chests and have you react to it. So, And that's, you know, I think we're all just, pardon fucking tired fucking of it. Fucking tired. We're tired of it. We're tired of it. Yeah. You're tired of it. Everybody's tired of it, but you have to do the right thing. Right. We saw firsthand, and, and if you don't agree, please tell me. We saw firsthand what strict mitigation efforts can do to the numbers. Right. They go down. So now nobody wants to go back to those very, very strict mitigation efforts. That's why they say, okay. And we don't have to. We'll leave the restaurants open, but, but. they have to be takeout only. Right. Uh, no, you can't go to the gyms, or in certain cases, you can go to the gyms during certain times of the day. Right. Or Soldiers can go to the gym. Soldiers can go, go to, yeah. Or, um, here in outside the fence line, you can, you know, stores can be open. But you can only have so many people uh, per square foot yeah, in, the, in your store. In the commissary, it's 275. And they've actually counted out the number of hand baskets and carts. And if you don't have one of those with your family, like if you and I went in the store together, we could have one, obviously. But if you're in there by yourself, you've got to have a hand basket and a cart. And when those run out, you can't go in the store. I'm glad so I grabbed back to that basket. again. Because I remember Kaufman was doing that and a few other businesses right. were doing that. So, um, yeah. But we, uh, you know, we can't. Well, I guess we could, but we're not supposed to. We're not supposed to leave Germany. Uh, no. Like you, you always like to go to Cora, 
uh, I'll have to go to France. Yeah. And I actually saw an ad for that. Said, oh, maybe I'll go down there. Oh, wait, I can't nope. because you may get quarantined going into France and you will probably most definitely get quarantined coming back into Germany. Right. And that's, and so that's part of where I, I've kind of stopped keeping up is okay, like people going to the States are kind of double because they're going to probably get quarantined to wherever they go and they got to quarantine back. And the work policy now is, if you decide, if you voluntarily choose to go home on leave for two weeks, then you need to figure out how what kind of leave you're going to use for quarantine. Yeah. We're not going to give it to you. It's not admin time. You're not. You can't. You can't um, telework. I mean, a lot of bosses will be more flexible than that. But they're trying to say, if you volunteer to expose yourself to COVID in this way, the the, the business is not liable for what happens to you, and we shouldn't be spending money for your decision. So I, I totally get that, but. Yeah, I agree. Well, I feel I, Keith's opinion. Not that I plan on going. Keith's opinion. Not that I plan on going back to the states anytime soon, unless I absolutely have to. But uh, if you come back, if you take leave, you're back before your leave's over, like normal, right. and you have to quarantine. Mm -hmm. If you can telework, you mm -hmm. should be allowed to telework. I agree. So, um, and that the telework policy has been maximized in the federal government. So I think that's important too. Um, and, and again, I don't think. There isn't a boss out there who wouldn't say, yeah, just work from home, ROM, right? Sure. Whatever. I always forget what ROM means for whatever reason. Uh, restriction of movement. Yeah. So yeah. it's two weeks. That's it. So in any case, that's kind of the COVID update. What else you got? Uh, that is that's it. it. The Golf, play uh, they play Minnesota. Minnesota. They were on a roll. They need to stop the rush or they're going to kill you. Yeah. Raiders play the Chiefs on Sunday night football with Al Michaels and Chris Collinsworth tonight, which I will not be staying up for. No, we'll record that. Uh, <laughs> so uh, I can't do that. I, uh, yeah, I I'll, I don't even know who's starting for the Cowboys as far as quarterback tonight. I was going to ask you who's the starting quarterback. Uh, oh, probably Andy Stephen's Dalton. He's not here either. I wonder what's up with that. Oh, he's busy. Eh, he's a busy guy. They have lives. People have lives. I don't even see PJ and Ray. I don't either. That's, uh, and they, we, we advertise this a week ahead of time. So. Yeah. Huh. It's a busy time. All right. So maybe this isn't the most ideal time to, uh, it, it is 11 o'clock, so it's church time too. PJ and Ray. Our that nine, doesn't bother PJ our 9 Ray. PM time was more favorable to everyone on the East Coast. Um, so, but that we're not doing nine. We can't do nine PM again. So we have to, you know, we'll have to figure that out. Uh, it's just too late. Yeah, it's this Sunday is a, we got to go to work during football season. This is about the latest we can do it. Right. Right. So. Yeah. All right. I think that's it then. So we appreciate that you joined us tonight. Again, the audio version of this will be available about a day after this is done. I will tune it up with the good audio and get it out there. Jason, when you have time, I want to pick your brain and send me a message. Okay, I will do that, Ernie. Thank you. George Brown says, Bridgewater, knee out for the Panthers. Not me, Ernie. I'm kind of hurt. Uh, I think I hope Bridgewater's okay. I know he has uh, he has that leg he ripped up. So. Yeah. Uh, Raiders are in good shape. It was the other knee. Much, but uh, Marty Hauser was making fun of me. Well, not making fun of me. He's a big Chiefs fan, so I made fun of him, actually. So, In any case, join us next week, Sunday, 5 o'clock, the usual time. We'll try to get the watch party to work. Hopefully it will. And uh, we appreciate all you're doing for uh, watching the show and spreading the word when you're able. So thanks a lot. Talk to you soon and bye-bye. Have a great week.